we now look at how we solve a first order linear differential equation. Let's look at this example. Um, y prime is equal to 3y plus x plus 1. And first we need to rewrite this equation into the standard form. Remember the standard form of the first order linear differential equation is the following and y prime plus p of x y n is equal to q of x and x is the independent variable and y is the unknown function. p of x and q of x are known functions. So now we subtract 3y both sides. We have y prime minus 3y is equal to x plus 1. Now we are ready to find first the integrating factor. To do that, we need to recognize what p of x is. p of x is negative 3. Uh, we need to include the negative sign. So we integrate p of x dx and we have negative 3 dx. We just need one integrating factor, so we just need one antiderivative over here. After we calculate this integral, we have the integrating factor. We have the integrating factor mu of x is equal to e to the integral of p of x dx and we have e to the negative 3x. Now we need to multiply this factor both sides of the equation. So we have e to the negative 3x multiplied by y prime negative 3y is equal to x plus 1 and e to the negative 3x. Now if we have found this integrating factor correctly the left hand side should become a derivative of a function. Let's look at it. And we have e to the negative 3x times y prime minus 3 e to the negative 3x times y. And we see this is exactly the derivative of e to the negative 3x times y. If we use the product rule, we can easily verify. So the left hand side is equal to the right hand side which is x plus 1 and multiplied by e to the negative 3x. Okay. So now we know that we can find the antiderivative e to the negative 3xy must be equal to x plus 3, 1 and e to the negative 3x dx. So this follows from this fact that if f prime of x is given a function f of x, then f of x, capital F of x, is going to be the integral of f of x and dx. So this is what we are doing over here. Okay, So this is what we have. And then look at the right hand side. This is a typical example of doing integration by parts. So now we recognize that we need to integrate this part first. Okay. So just ignore x plus 1 and integrate e to the negative 3x. Sometimes it helps if the function isn't that easy, but here we can just try to see the integral over here is just negative 1 third and e to the negative 3x plus c. But c over here isn't necessary, so we just take 1 and this is what we have. So integrate, then we have x plus 1, just copy, and integrate this part. And then we have d and negative 1 third e to the negative 3x. So this is what we have. In fact, we can still clearly see that we have the differential if we do the actual differential e to the negative 3x times negative one third, we do get by chain rule um, negative one third 
e to the negative 3x times negative 3 dx. And that's exactly what we started. That's e to the negative 3x dx. Okay. So now we are in the form of integral here u dv. So according to the integration by parts, this is integration by parts. And this is going to be ux plus 1 multiplied by v. This is negative 1 third e to the negative 3x. Multiply these two functions and then subtract, switch the positions of these two functions. Negative 1 third e to the negative 3x and dx plus 1. And then we simplify. So we have negative x plus 1 over 3 and e to the negative 3x. And this one over here is plus 1 third and integrate e to the negative 3x. Just do one step at a time. And then we have negative x plus 1 over 3 e to the negative 3x, and then plus 1 third. Integrate one more time. We have negative 1 third and e to the negative 3x. And then now we need to add c because we actually need this arbitrary constant over here to get the general solution. So to conclude, we have e to the negative x negative 3x times y is equal to negative x plus 1 over 3, negative 3x, and minus 1 ninth, and e to the negative 3x plus c. Now we see we can simplify a little bit by multiplying both sides by multiplying by e to the 3x, then we have y of x. This unknown function is solved now. It's negative x plus 1 over 3 minus 1, 9, and plus c e to the 3x. We notice that we must have this constant c. Otherwise, we don't have the general solution. So this is our general solution.